Have you ever been obsessed with something? I remember about two or three years ago, all my friends started talking about this app. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's called TikTok. And I'm 21, right? I'm a grown man at this point. I don't need any more apps on my phone. But one fateful Saturday night, I decided, why not? Let me just download it, see what all the hype is about, see what all the fuss is about. And, and I'm scrolling at, at about 7 p.m. I start scrolling and I'm seeing all these like, you know, the, don't worry, I can, I can actually, I can, I can do it. But I, I keep scrolling and I'm seeing all these, all these dances, right? You know, all these cool little, and, and it's 7 p.m. when I start and I don't check the clock again until it's 3 a.m. Y'all, I, I got church in the morning and I just spent eight hours, a, a whole work day, a whole work day, scrolling through TikTok. Am I upset about it? Not really. Has my obsession somewhat subsided? Yes, but <laughs> whether it's a pair of shoes you're dying to buy or, or that TikTok dance that you just can't stop doing or, or candy that you're dying to eat, me all the time. We all get the idea of becoming mentally consumed with a thing, person, or idea. When things get stuck in our brain, they can affect us a lot. A another thing that can get stuck in your brain is what we're talking about in this series, the one. That's the idea of, you know, dating. <laughs> you may not call it dating, but you get the point. It's the idea of having somebody in your life that you're interested in romantically and hopefully they're interested in you too. If you've ever been interested in someone, then you know that it's a lot like getting a song stuck in your mind. It's like you can't stop thinking about that person no matter how hard you try. And that's totally normal, by the way, and not necessarily a, a problem. It only becomes a problem when a person or, or the idea of finding the one becomes an obsession. You've probably seen this happen with people you know. Maybe you have a friend who can't have a conversation without talking about their girlfriend. Maybe it's the guy who always says, oh, oh yo, 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 that reminds me of, and redirects the conversation to the person they're dating. So how do you know when something or someone becomes an unhealthy obsession? When you have somebody in your life and, and they're all you think about, or when you have somebody in your life and they're the only person you spend time with. Maybe when you have somebody in your life and they're all you talk about. When you don't have somebody in your life, but the idea of someone takes up your time and energy. You're searching, waiting, and hoping to find that person, and you talk about it more than the people who are actually dating. You may be thinking, Caleb, yo, why is this a bad thing? It's not like I'm obsessed with stealing puppies or eating rocks. <laughs> That would be a real problem. In fact, so much of the world around us tells us we should be obsessed with someone. There are songs about it. Movies make it seem so romantic and almost make it an expectation that all picture-perfect relationships are ones where both people are obsessed with each other. Influencer couples get the most attention when they appear in content together. To be obsessed with someone is an idea we're sold on Instagram, TikTok, and movies, and in celebrity gossip. Once you dive into the world of crushes and relationships, total obsession with each other is pretty common. So you might be asking, if having a relationship with someone or, or being interested in someone isn't a bad thing, then why are you making it sound like it is? There is nothing wrong with being excited about having someone in your life. But when everything else in your life seems to fade away because of a person, it's a problem. Here are a few reasons why. You miss out. There's so much to do in high school that you'll potentially miss out on if you're obsessed with a relationship or the idea of a relationship. You'll miss out on chances to make memories with your friends, connect with your family, and develop your talents. You may even miss out on chances to learn new things or serve others. In other words, being too focused on any one thing, whether it's a person, relationship, or hobby, is never a good idea because you will miss out on other important things. Maybe you alienate people. Your friends do notice when they are no longer a priority in your life. They feel the distance and separation, and eventually that takes a toll on your friendships. Or maybe you lose yourself. Tying up so much of your life in someone else can cause you to lose sight of who you're becoming. 
You might find yourself losing a sense of your identity or your uniqueness. You may find yourself only listening to music they like, spending less time on your hobbies or not acting like yourself. Your high school years are a great opportunity for you to learn more about yourself. And if you're wrapped up in someone else, you might not get a sense of who you are apart from that person that you're with or in a relationship with. And look, there's no judgment here. Trust me, I know it's easy to become obsessed, but we want you to live a full life and obsession causes you to miss out. So the question is, what do you do about it? You can't not care about someone if you care about them, right? So what do we do when we find ourselves obsessing over someone? We're going back to the book of Proverbs today, the same book we looked at last week, to read something else King Solomon, one of the most famous kings of Israel, wrote. He says, If you find honey, eat just enough, too much of it, and you will vomit. Now, some of you hear that and think, exactly. If I hear my friend say one more thing about her, I am going to vomit. Like, Solomon, the bro nailed it. <laughs> But the wisdom Solomon's trying to pass along here, it's a little different. It's all about the idea of moderation. He's basically saying that if you get too much of something, even good things, it has the potential to turn into a bad thing. So where's the line? When does it go from good to too much? In order to figure this out, we're gonna look at a passage from a letter written by the Apostle Paul, who wrote a lot of the New Testament. Paul saw his whole purpose in life as telling others about the love of God and encouraging them to live in a way that modeled that love. He wrote a letter called Ephesians, which many scholars believe was more like a, a public speech than a letter to an individual person. It was a general encouragement that people from all backgrounds could apply to their lives, and that includes us. One more thing before we look at his words. Paul didn't live in a dating culture. He and his friends didn't exist in a world that included prom and dating apps and being put in the friend zone. So although this passage doesn't specifically address dating, the truth that comes from it can be applied there. It gives us something to do with what Solomon wrote even earlier in history. This is how Paul starts. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Paul is basically saying, hey, Pay attention to how you're living your life. Don't just let life happen to you. As you choose how you live, wise is better than unwise, obviously. <laughs> Using words like wise and unwise when it comes to dating is perfect. Often having a significant other in your life isn't necessarily always as easy as right or wrong. In fact, the truth is choosing to date or not date in high school is more about wisdom. Wisdom is different than deciding between right and wrong. Wisdom is asking what's best. I mean, if your parents have strictly banned it, that's a different story. But most of the time, dating decisions are rarely about, is that person good or bad? And more, are they good for me? And are they good for me right now? So Paul is encouraging his audience, pay attention to what you do and do your best to make the best and wisest choice. This principle can be applied to just about anything. Your, your friendships, school, schedule, screen time habits. For the sake of today's conversation, here are some questions to ask yourself when it comes to dating. At what point does a healthy interest in someone or the idea of dating become an unwise obsession? And if that point is somewhere between being interested in someone and being obsessed with someone, where am I currently? While relationships don't have obvious labels of interest or obsession, we can probably identify some signs of interest or obsession. So what are some indicators of interest and what are some indicators of obsession? Maybe that could be like following someone on Instagram. That's an interest and a horrible ex. <laughs> Liking and commenting on every single story or post on their Instagram from earlier today, back through the beginning of time, that's obsession. <laughs> 
hanging out with them after school. That's interest. Canceling plans with friends or not doing your homework in order to hang out, that's more obsession. See what I mean? So Paul continues, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Now, you may be asking, I'm sorry, are the days evil? Like, is Paul talking about a zombie apocalypse? No. <laughs> Actually, in the original language, the word Paul uses here means annoying, difficult, or time-consuming. In other words, your time gets taken up by so much stuff you have to do anyway, we have to make the most of what we have left. Paul's referring to our tendency to waste time in unwise ways. You've probably experienced this before. You've had a free day or a break from school that you just wasted, and later you wished you had that free time back. Paul wants his readers to make the most of the time we have on earth. When it comes to high school, these are some of the most unique years of your life. You'll look back at these days and be surprised at how important your current friendships are and how memorable this time in your life is. When everyone is talking and reminiscing about high school, you don't wanna say, ah, I missed that time with my friends because I was always with my girlfriend. Or it sounds like it was fun, but I remember being miserable a lot of the time because that person I crushed on was dating someone else. You have a chance to make the most of these days by encouraging your friends, influencing people who are younger than you and growing in so many areas. Another person you are dating or are obsessing over shouldn't hold you back from doing those things. In other words, God has a plan for your life and specifically for your life in high school. The key is to pay attention to whether your obsession with someone you are dating or interested in is causing you to miss out on what your high school days can offer. To summarize Paul's words in, in the context of dating, here's one way to think about it. To make the wisest choice with the time you have, don't make any one your everything. That's not a knock on the person you're interested in. They're probably great. <laughs> This is about you and the power and time you are giving someone else in your life. Is dating something you can do with part of your time and part of your attention? If so, awesome. If someone you're dating has become your everything, if your dating life is holding you back from the rest of your life, it may be time to rethink some things. Here's what that can look like. If you're currently in a relationship, don't abandon the rest of the world around you. If we're gonna be wise about our relationships, we have to live life in a way that prioritizes all of our important relationships. Don't ditch your friends. Don't abandon your family. Don't lose interest in the things that you used to enjoy. You were a whole person before this person came into your life. So don't lose the other parts of yourself because of him or her. Get back to the things that used to make up your world. Get back to being you. Next, if you aren't dating anyone, stop thinking your life can't be good unless you start dating. I get it. It can be difficult when you feel like everyone except you has a date to prom or, or someone to post cute pics with, but you don't need another person to make you a whole person or to have a great time in high school. Go be you. Do things you like to do. Hang out with people you enjoy. If you meet someone along the way, Great, <laughs> but don't spend high school waiting around for that person to show up or, or that crush to notice you. There's way too much that is awesome about your life to not enjoy it because you wish you were in a relationship. Also, trust God with the future of your relationships. This isn't something we do one time and check off the list. Trusting God with the relationships we do or don't have means believing God has your best interests in mind. It means you can believe God is good and is looking out for you. And it means trusting a bigger picture than just your relationship status right here and right now. And finally, ask someone you trust if you're truly obsessed. Talk to your small group leader or a friend who knows you well enough to have seen a difference, someone who will tell you the truth and ask them if obsession is an issue in your relationship or a relationship that you want. If they say yes, 
ask for their help when it comes to picking new habits and ways to spend your time, thoughts, and conversations. And again, don't be hard on yourself if they say yes. It's easy to become obsessed with any number of things, but especially a person we like. The thing to remember is, this isn't about judging your obsession, but deciding to make changes that allow for you to make the most of your time here and now. As you head out today, I want you to remember that I'm not saying don't date or don't have crushes, but I am saying don't miss out on your high school experience because you're obsessed with a dating relationship. Don't miss the chance to figure out who you are because you are too consumed with a person. In other words, don't make anyone your everything. If you feel like, hmm, that's me, then maybe you can pull your small group leader or a trusted adult to the side tonight and let him or her know that you'd like some help. They'll help you get things back in perspective. Why? Because just like Paul cared about the people he wrote to, they care about you. And they want you to have an incredible life and make the most of the time that you have.